Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm just outside my door here in the southern Appalachian Mountains at about 2,700 feet in the state of Virginia. And it's really cold out here. Do you ever wonder where insects go in the winter time? How do they survive these freezing cold winter temperatures? Today's episode is about where do insects go and how do they survive winter? And specifically, how do honeybees survive the winter? A great young friend of mine, a former student, shout out to Chris, led me to a feral honeybee hive that was out in the forest. In this video, I'm gonna don a bee suit for the first time. I'm gonna get a smoker and learn how to use it and get up close and personal with a feral hive of bees. Feral refers to an organism that was once domesticated and has returned to the wild. This honeybee hive may be from feral generations, or it could just be a group of bees that left a hide last summer. So I'm going to keep my eye on this hive over time. So this episode is about how different insects have adapted to survive winter, and particularly how do bees get through the winter. Stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. So I went up, I gently smoked the bees, I'm going to let them rest a few minutes and then I'm going to go up back up with my camera and see if we can take a look inside this feral honeybee hive. So I'm up here on the ladder now, peering inside this honeybee colony. It's so fascinating to be up here and be this close in relative safely to a large swarm or large hive of feral honeybees. You can see some of these bees are coming in and out. The smoke seemed to have worked perfectly. I don't feel threatened at this point and I don't think that they've even tried to land on my suit or sting me. There may be even one bee that landed on my suit. They seem to be more concerned about the event of a possible fire than an invader may be here to steal their honey. So this is their entrance. There's typically guard bees around the entrance. And as I described, these guard bees would be the first to attack and try to ward off a, a attacker that might be coming in to steal honey. The rest of the hive would be alerted by pheromones, but thankfully I think with this smoke that I've, I've lowered that incidence and the fact that it's 50 degrees and these bees are probably slowed down a lot. So this comes back to my fundamental question is how do insects overwinter? Well, there's a lot of different ways that insects overwinter. Some, like a praying mantis, will overwinter by laying eggs in an egg case. And all the mantises will die out as freezing temperatures come, and only the eggs will survive the winter. Others overwinter as larvae, like the woolly bear caterpillar. And you can see woolly bears migrating to places to overwinter in leaf litter and dig and bury themselves and hibernate against the cold and then they will emerge eat some more and then pupate the silkworm moth would be an example of an organism that overwinters by forming a pupa and they rest inside that pupa and in the spring when the leaves come out 
they'll emerge uh, in order to feed on nectar and flowers, mate and lay eggs, and their life cycle continues. Ladybugs and stink bugs. Well, they're overwinter as adults. And we know that because they often try to come into our houses to overwinter. And the last one is much more rare, but some will uh, migrate as adults, like the monarch butterfly. They'll migrate all the way to their roost in Mexico. So what about honeybees? How do they survive? Well, unlike wasps like yellow jackets and hornets, which only the queen will overwinter, all the other workers will die out when freezing temperatures arrive, and the queens will bury themselves in leaf litter or in logs and seek to escape freezing temperatures. Honeybees, however, the whole colony survives, and they do it by something that seems more like endothermy or warm-bloodedness than cold-bloodedness, ectotherms. The honeybees will actually overwinter in a dense cluster called a winter cluster. And in this cluster, the queen is in the center and all the worker bees surround her. And there are bees in this cluster that actually create heat by contracting muscles. You know that muscle contractions create heat. You know if you go for a run or lift weights, your body heats up and you will start to sweat. Because some of that energy used to contract your muscles is lost as heat. So worker bees will actually use the muscles that they use to fly and contract those muscles without moving their wings. So a worker bee that seems to be resting may actually be contracting his muscles and generating heat. The energy to generate this heat comes from, you guessed it, from honey. So bees need to be left with enough honey in their hive to survive the winter because they will use that honey during the winter time to, for energy to create heat by flexing their muscles. So these bees in this winter cluster will also actually migrate from the center of cluster to the outside. So a worker bee that's on the outside helping insulate and protect the inner bees will essentially migrate slowly into the interior while the interior bees will migrate to the outside so no bee is exposed to the cold for too long. Fascinating, fascinating process. Honeybees are probably the most studied insects and their social order and the things they do is absolutely fascinating. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. I was really excited to put on a bee suit, learn how to use a smoker and climb up a ladder and get up close to a feral honeybee hive. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and remember, I love answering comments. I love interacting with my viewers. Leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as you can. So thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.